untouchable teen dies after beating from teacher over wrong answer. And just disclaimer, we use the term untouchable only for the identification of more people outside of India. We recognize that Dalit is the more appropriate term, just a lot of people outside of India. I don't know that term. Um, on September 5th, on September 7th, a 15 year old Dalit boy, Nikhil Dohre was severely beaten by an upper caste teacher, Ashwini Singh, for making a mistake on an exam in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. Some reports say that the teacher used a stick or a rod to beat the young boy. Others report that he was kicked until he fell unconscious. After the incident, Dohre received medical treatment, but his health deteriorated, and he was taken to the hospital for intensive care. The following day, the formal declaration of death was determined. According to the police complaint filed by the father of the deceased, Ashvini initially promised to pay the expenses for the boy's medical treatment. However, after giving 40,000 rupees to the father, then he stopped taking his calls. And it's also reported that at this time he started using casteist slurs against the father. After the news of Nikhil's death spread, violent protests erupted. The protesters set two police vehicles on fire and damaged several private cars. Protesters also allegedly threw stones at police for not being able to catch the accused who fled. On September 29th, after a week-long search, the police arrested the accused teacher. Um, yeah, so this is obviously just like a horrific crime. There's... A lot of this story that isn't entirely clear in English-speaking media yet, the reports are that the teacher who did this is an upper caste Hindu who, or just, an, actually maybe not Hindu necessarily, because I haven't read Hindu, just that he is an upper caste individual, because it is across religions. Anyways, um, that either beat him for a wrong answer or just misspelling a word, essentially. How yeah. would you beat somebody enough for them to die? Like, how could you, like, what, what, what are you doing? I mean, I mean, any beating is bad, but like, how, how on earth, like, what are you doing that leads to that? Yeah. Yeah. I know that like corporal punishment is basically like very common in a lot of Indian schools, but like this level is pretty shocking to a lot of people. Um, and I thought this was important to highlight because we covered the story of another young boy who was about nine years old, who we covered that story about four or five weeks ago. And this is very similar to that. And this is giving rise to a larger awareness of caste-based violence in India. Because, I mean, like, people are already aware of it. There are a lot of people that deny it. Um, but empirically, the records from the government itself showed that between 2019 and 2020, there was an almost 10% increase in violence and attacks on Dalits within the span of one year. So this is a huge problem, and this is something that's increasing, but it is seemingly getting more media attention than it used to. Like I have a lot of friends in India and for a lot of crimes that happen in assaults against Dalits, they say like, honestly, a lot of them don't even get covered because it's normalized to a certain extent. Um, but because of the death of that boy about four or five weeks ago, and then incidents like this, there is, it's starting to become more of a wake up call about how endemic the problem is. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad people came out to protest. I mean, can I play the videos for the protest? Is this the video mm -hmm. of the protest? Yeah. Who are, who are doing these protests? Who are doing the protest? Dalits or anybody? Um, that's not entirely clear, just people who are outraged. So this is not the actual protest, this seemed like the aftermath of the protest. Yeah, or like a riot. Personally, I think is if you start setting things on fire oh, this at is that point, teacher. it's a riot. This is the teacher, the teacher who beat up uh, 
What is this SC for? Uh, SC stands for scheduled cast. Oh, scheduled it, cast. Boy to death is um, in Upper Pradesh has been arrested. Okay, hold on. This is the teacher. I hope they make a major, a big enough example of, of him to discourage other teachers from like doing anything similar. Like, what do you get out of it? Like, as a teacher, you know, you're like, okay, let me get a goddamn iron rod and beat the crap out of this kid. Like, does your salary increase? Are you like sadistic? Like, what is like, what happens in your life? What improves in your personal life that you have to do this? Are you just angry? Like, are there, like a lot of is people it just, say that is it that they're is, lower caste? Go ahead, go ahead. It belies like kind of an underlying disgust and rage towards like the Dalit community. The like, lower caste community. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, when I read about incidents like these, like it is analyses primarily from people involved in activism for these communities. So I know that that's a very specific narrative, but. I don't see a lot of other people giving explanations for this type of abuse. Um, oxymoron is saying parents ask teachers to beat the crap out of their kids. Well, Jesus Christ. Well, then the, then the parents are criminals as well. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so just to be clear, we don't we can't 100 percent be sure about why this happened okay but given that there's so many different um reports of lower caste people dying at the hands of upper caste people in india um you know whether or not this is one of those examples this highlights that problem that systemic systemic problem that exists across india right yeah um i mean so, it's like really extreme forms of violence like it's called caste atrocities for a reason in fact just a few days ago or within the past week there was an incident where two dalit girls were taken into a field gang rape okay can't see the word because youtube and then hung from a tree wow like the stuff that happens against Dalits in India is like on a level that is so extreme like it I've only heard about this level of cruelty towards people when talking about like the 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 terrorism that would be inflicted upon post slave communities after the civil war mm. because after the civil war when the enslaved African Americans got their freedom the only way that they were kept in check was basically through a reign of terror by you know, the majority of white people in power and forming organizations like the Triple K and doing just extremely cruel public forms of dehumanization and violence towards these communities to keep them in their place because technically they don't have the law on their side anymore. And this, this level of violence in the form that it takes really reminds me of that. And it's, people need to remember that the Dalit, Adivasi and tribal community of, of India constitute 70% of the organ of the, of the population. And so a lot of people are calling for basically like a rising up of like consciousness to liberate the majority of Indians from these conditions. Okay, two things. First of all, um, a lot of people in the live chat are confirming that parents are asking a lot of Indian people in the live chat are confirming that parents do ask their teachers to beat their children, which is insane. Okay. Um, okay, let me read this. This is actually kind of uh, weird. Okay. Treasure Kingdom is saying this has nothing to do with religion. Okay, let's see. This is very interesting. It has more to do with supremacist ideologies and impure purity ideologies oh so you mean like religion what it has nothing hinduism is a religion that has supremacy which is a supremacist ideology and is yeah. about impure and it's 
impure impurity. It's the, that's the entire point of the caste system. What are you talking about? So you're like, oh, this has nothing to do with religion, but then follow up by confirming that this is a bad religion. In India, the Dalits are declared. The Dalits and the Shudras are declared the most spiritually impure because their caste in, 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 uh, jobs dictates that they deal with the worldly things the material things the things of this world that make them impure because they're more tangibly connected to the cycles of life and death than others who pers pursue intellect and esoteric knowledge that's the whole point that's what makes them impure <laughs> like I just can't get over this country. This is how bizarre this is. Is this like satire? This has nothing to do with religion. And then follows up by it has more to do with supremacist ideologies and impure purity ideologies. Okay, so then religion. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's religion. God damn it. Unbelievable. Um <laughs> do you, do these just because the president of a tribal themselves? woman doesn't mean that these things don't happen. Yeah um oh he's some people are saying he's just rephrasing <laughs> just rephrasing <laughs> true 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 uh wait let me see um shriash is saying the president is a puppet on formality when uh the minority president what is this i don't understand this anyway let's so in, in terms of the role within the government you know the the oh. when you have a parliamentary system the president as isn't actually that important right oh so yeah okay. use that position to slot in someone with a politically convenient identity for the sake of pandering to an audience that they want to bolster their support so right now the president is a, a, a tribal woman which is actually very historic and she's part of the bjp party um yeah. Which oh yeah was causing all these political contentions yeah i i get i i heard the role of the presidency in india is to like just have a palace and just chill there i think that's the role of the president in like most parliamentary systems honestly mm. um i don't know in israel they have like they he does like goes and travels and the president like acts like a cheerleader for the country or something so he does some stuff anyways we don't know by the way having having a president and a prime minister shows that you don't need a monarch for a heads up for a head of state you know, you know, because a lot of people who support a monarchy, they say like, you know, we have a head of state and we have a head of government. OK, so the, that's what the monarch can do, can be like they kind of like a cheerleader. But the fact that some republics have a president and a prime minister will like you, yeah, we have a head of government and we get a president for the heads of state. So there you go. You don't need to make it um, lifelong and you don't need to make it hurt based on um, birth. Right. So based on bloodline. It could, it could still be an elective position. You don't need a king. Mm -hmm. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.